several days later. The new ABC News Washington Post poll suggests former President Trump has a stronger than ever lead over President Biden, 51 to 42 percent in a hypothetical head-to-head -head 2024 matchup. So let's go ahead and bring in ABC News political director Rick Klein. Good morning to you, Rick. So good to see you there. Uh, so the big question right now, is President Biden in trouble? Okay, friends, welcome once again to the YouTube channel. We got a good one for you today. We're not going to say much, as you guys already know. Donald Trump is leading in the poll by double digits. I didn't, I mean, I'm not shocked whatsoever. I, I've been saying this is going to happen. The people are frustrated and they are turning against Biden. Yep. So Trump is supposed to win with a landslide if everything goes as, it, as it's supposed to. If the election goes the way it's supposed to. Don't call me an election denier now. Anyway, friends, let's take a listen to this video. This is Donald J. Trump taking questions from the audience about wokeness, educations, and so on. And I want you to hear how he puts it all together. All right, let's dial in. We'll take a couple of quick questions, and then we'll, uh, I'll shake a few hands. Question, ma'am, go ahead. Hello. Hi, welcome, President Trump. Thank you. Okay, so you kind of already answered my question a little bit, but my question was, when you become president again, what would the first thing you'll do to fix our current school system and even our current military that's only focusing on teaching woke gender yeah. ideology over learning the basics of life and history and protecting us? So a good question. Now, some of it partially answered, but not all. Uh, with the military, we're ending woke immediately. You know, I ended woke totally. And then they, in their first week, they reestablished it. It's crazy. They pay instructors hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. It literally, I mean, literally, they want our military to be woke. Uh, and it's just not going to happen. You read in Hawaii where they had the horrible fire where they have people going there. And before they bring them on board, they have to study woke for a week. Can you believe this? In other words, everyone's wanting to get back to their home, finding the bodies. It was such a tragedy. You don't read about it too much anymore, but hell is going on over there. And they want to give them classes in essentially wokeness. Can you believe? So, you know, you've seen it. Well, we'll end that very quickly. We will, uh, with the school, I think the schools are very important. We're going to bring our education department back. Now, if you look at our education, we pay more per pupil than any country in the world by three times. And yet we're at the bottom of the list. We have a bad, very bad. If a place like Iowa, as an example, if you could run your own and we give you just a percentage of the money, because you wouldn't need nearly the money that they waste in Washington, Number one, you love your students, you want your students, you know your students, the parents will be involved. That's the other thing we're going to get the let the parents, because some of these school boards have become tyrannical. They've been horrible. But we're going to bring that back, and that's going to answer your question, because uh, I think that we can have one of the best school systems in the world. Right now, we have one of the worst. Uh, they basically rate 40 countries, and we're always at close to the bottom of the list, sometimes the bottom of the list and spending more money than anybody else. So we're going to take care of all of your needs very quickly. And I think it's going to happen very quickly. And one of the things we're doing, closing the border day one and starting drilling for oil. OK, we're going to drill, baby, drill. <laughs> right. That's like the solution right there to a lot of our issues is reestablishing ourselves on the world stage as energy independent. Without energy, everything else is falling apart. He understands that. That's why these supposed climate change and green gas emissions, you know, net zero discussion, as they've been talking about. Um, that's why they have an issue with Mr. Trump. <laughs> the people who are pushing for that don't like Trump very much because Trump is going to be like, nope, we're drilling, boy. We get to get this energy back up and running again. Love it. OK, do you have one over here? Yes, please. Mm. Mm. Welcome to Iowa, President Trump. Thank you very much. Um, here's my question. I felt that the 2020 election was fraudulent. So what measures are being taken by the RNC to um, make sure that that doesn't happen again? OK, well, you're not the only one, because if you look at polls, many, many people, big percentage of the country felt it was, uh, you know, they used COVID to cheat, but they did. They would have cheated anyway. Uh, many precautions, many law firms have been hired. A lot of work has been done and beyond RNC. I mean, uh, I wasn't very thrilled with them, obviously. You know, I was always told you go out, you campaign. I left here early in the morning and you go home and you, you know, you think you've done great. I actually made seven rallies 
on the last day or two, seven. I don't know anybody's going to do seven rallies. And they're big rallies, and they were full-scale rallies. And I left, and I said, we're going to win. And at 10 o'clock in the evening, I looked at the numbers, and it was over. We were doing so well. Pennsylvania, all these states were doing so well. Then all of a sudden, they made adjustments and all this crap. Mm-hmm. And it was a horrible thing. So it's crazy. They were able to do things with COVID. Oh, we can't go vote. We can't this. We can't that. Mail-in voting. We have a lot of great people involved. That's more than anything else. I say, I don't want help in getting the vote. I only want help. It used to be called election day. Now it's called election period because some of these things last for like two months, right? I said, that's all I want. I want people to work because we went back and we did great. And then the vote comes in and then it, and it was looking great. And then all of a sudden, this horrible thing happened. And by the way, it's all down. People know it. We had judges that didn't want to get involved. They were afraid. Everybody was afraid. They were afraid of the subject. It's a, it's a disgrace. What happened to our country is a total disgrace, okay, disgrace. So, and look at, and look at the result. I mean, look at the result. I mean, practically every problem that we talked about today wouldn't have happened. Ukraine wouldn't have happened. Inflation wouldn't have happened. I mean, so many of these things that we talked sure. about today, we wouldn't even be thinking about. Mm-hmm. Look at the supply chain. Who ever heard of a supply chain where people can't deliver? You couldn't get baby food. You couldn't get anything. Mm-hmm. The only thing you could get is all the drugs you wanted. You could get <laughs> drugs. You could get cocaine. I wonder whose cocaine that was, by the way. And <laughs> There's only one culprit I can think of. What about that deal? They can't Packages figure it out. Of cocaine. And they said, well, we don't know, no, no. Yeah, they, they don't, don't know, know, all right. When they went for the fingerprint thing, you know, everybody's there, fingerprints all. It was wiped clean. Not one fingerprint. Not one fingerprint, which is impossible. You can go to any place in this room, there's fingerprints all over the place, especially those cubicles. So uh, we're going to be working very hard. That's my number one thing. Much more so than campaigning, actually, is that they don't cheat on the election. Because they will try, and they'll be successful to an extent. But we're not going to let them steal this election because this country is going to fail. I tell you, I don't think the people of this country will allow it to happen either. No way. Because this country is on a very thin edge right now. Thank you very much for the question. I'll tell you what, I love the way he stands on his conviction, no matter what the media says. He knows that the election was rigged. He kept on saying it, no matter what they told him. They called him an election denier. But really, he's protecting our election cycle and the system in itself by questioning what happened then. You do not want to live in a country where the election is being manipulated by the powers that be to overcome and win against their opponent. It's not a good thing. It's a very dangerous thing. So in a sense, if you think about it, Donald Trump is doing things in a way to protect Uh, the election to protect your vote so that nobody ever loses in a way that he has again. So he's doing a good thing. Thank you. Appreciate it. I want to thank you, President, for all that you've done. And and a question I want to ask you is, I'm, I'm telling you, no man can endure what you have endured. Do you... Do you realize that God is behind you and strengthening you? Do you realize that? Well, I appreciate what you're saying. I understand what you're saying, too. It's been a terrible thing in so many ways. The only thing, the great gratitude I get, I'm looking at polls now where we're 50 points, 60 points up, you know, among all these people. And we're beating Biden in all these polls. We're beating everybody. And uh, we have had to endure. We endured a fake Russia, Russia, Russia thing for years. We endured all of this stuff, all fake. And think of how bad these people were. A guy like Adam Shifty Shifter, he's a real bad guy. I call him pencil neck. He's got the smallest neck I've ever seen. He's not going to be playing for your local uh, teams, Iowa, Iowa State. They're not going to be recruiting him to play football. But Adam Schiff. He makes up with Hillary and with the Democrats. They make up the Russia, Russia, Russia scam. He knows it's a scam. Think about how bad. I have sons and daughters. You know, we love our sons and daughters, right? And I watch him on television one day. So he knows it's a hoax. Russia, Russia, Russia. Turned out to be a total hoax. No collusion. There was no, no anything. So he knows it's a hoax right in the middle. And he goes out to the microphones after leaving a meeting, which is supposed to be very, uh, you know, Quiet. Nobody's supposed to know what goes on in there. He goes out to the microphone. He goes, 
The president's son, Donald Trump Jr., will go to prison for what he's done. Now, he knows it's a hoax. Think of it. It's not like I'm reading and seeing, and I watch this guy talking. Uh, me. I'm watching him saying that my son is going to prison. My son is going to prison. And I know that he had nothing to do. There was nothing. There was a whole thing was made up. It was a made up. So you know why it was made up? It was an excuse why Hillary lost. They said, let's blame Russia. And it was supposed to be a one day deal. But the fake news wouldn't let it be one day. And the fake news carried it and on and on and on. We have the same thing right now. It's going on still. Do you know that if I and I got indicted, but because the people know me so well, they know it's it's all bullshit. It's all bullshit. They know that. <laughs> And think of it. They say I like his streamlined way of thinking. I, I don't know. How would you say it? He's really answering the question, but he travels. So he he he's coming back to the question, but he tends to talk about the different segments connected to it. He's a I love that way of thinking. Um <clears throat> and again, it, it was all a hoax. I don't know how these systems are still in place. I don't know how some of these people are not behind bars. I guess there's nothing in our system that condemns behaviors like they did to him. But again, imagine if he was the one doing that to anybody, what <laughs> the outcry would be, you know, but um, hmm. this is where we are. They say he questioned the election. He questioned, well, everybody in this room questioned the election. The Democrats questioned 2016. They were all standing up. They were forming cards. They were forming all sorts of things. They were all, and those are the same guys that now that say we'd, it's so corrupt. Washington's a corrupt place. But think of it, you're watching some guy on television, a high ranking congressman say that your son is going to prison and he knows that it was a hoax. I mean, how bad do you have to be to do that? And then it gets, you know, no collusion after two and a half years. And then two weeks go by and I had a little piece. I focused on China and other things. It's almost the easy subject, right? I focused on the easy things like China, Russia. And then they start with Ukraine, Ukraine, Ukraine. He made a phone call to Ukraine. It was a perfect phone call. You know, that phone call turned out to be absolutely nobody's ever seen anything. Everything I said was right about please study if there's any corruption, please report it to the Attorney General of the United States, etc. It turned out to be exactly right. A lot of people are saying right now they've got to undo even the theory of those indictments because those indictments were fake, just like everything else. So we have to get back to making our country great again. But you're right. Many people ask me that question. They say, how do you, how do, you do it? And I do it because I feel real love and I feel real appreciation. And I do it because it's more important than anything else I could do. I could be living a very nice life, a very nice life in the most beautiful places all over the world. And here I am with you in Iowa, and I'd rather be here. I'd rather be here. So thank you very much. Very nice. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Hello, Mr. President. My question for you is, what are you going to do to make future generations more successful than what we are right now? Well, we have to save our country first. I really do. I mean, it's a great question in a way, but uh, I think our country, we have 30, almost 36 trillion in debt. Uh, we are probably, if, if this group keeps running, think of what's happened. We used to be allies with Saudi Arabia, a lot of money, a lot of everything, a lot of energy. We didn't need their energy. That was a beauty. But we were allies with all these different countries. Everyone's left us. Brazil is up with China now. Saudi Arabia is with China. Many of the Middle Eastern countries, a lot of oil, a lot of money, they're with China. We've lost it. The whole of South America is with China. This all happened over the last two and a half years. It's unbelievable. We have no relation with all the money we waste on trying to bribe friendship. You know, we try and bribe our friendships. We're not with anybody. We don't have anybody. And Europe honestly takes advantage of us on trade and on NATO. They take total advantage of us. And, you know, you see that with Ukraine. We're trying to help them. And the problem is Biden got so far ahead of this thing that now, you know, they're saying, well, why should we have to put up money? The stupid Americans are putting it all up. You know, that's what happened. Europe is we're 200 billion and they're 25 billion. And it's right at their doorstep. And we, are, we have an ocean in between us. It's much different. So 
The first thing, just to answer your question, we have to save our country. Okay? Sad. It's a sad answer, but it happens to be true. Okay, how about we do one more? We always have to end on a good one, okay? We have to end on a very good one. I'm saying little because I want to let the man speak. Um, this NATO war that we are fighting and we are paying for, over 75% of the income is coming from us. That is a problem. And plus, these establishments, shall I say, these um, administrative states, they are going to benefit from this. For those of you who don't know, this is a war where the rich men and there's corrupt leaders in place to benefit from whatever happened to Ukraine. It seems like, anyway, there's a lot could be said about that, but I want to say this. We need to stay out of this. It's none of our business. That's all I'm going to say because there are wars happening all over the place that we don't get involved. Why in particular are we involving Ukraines? I have no idea. And again, I, I'm totally anti-war. I'm calling for peace because I realize this stuff never works. It's always leave people, cities in total decay and deplorable condition as a result. Totally, we should be crying out against this war and stop funding it because it makes no sense whatsoever. Nobody benefits from this but the rich. Hi, President Trump. Hi. Um, first of all, I just want to say that I love and respect you so much, and I want to thank you for being America's biggest fighter. So um, there's that. But I also, let's have a policy-related question. I just want to know if you have any words of advice or encouragement for um, a lot of us young conservatives who are afraid to speak out, as you may know. Um, I definitely know from being a student at Iowa, Hawkeye State, by the way. Well, good. Um, good. <laughs> and uh, I just want to know, school. you know, especially with the caucus coming up, we need to get a lot more young people out there. So I'd just like to know if you have any thoughts on how we could be better patriots to get you So back I'll in it's, it's so great that you asked that, and with such enthusiasm and everything, it's so great. So remember this. There are far more of you than you think. You don't see them. You don't see them. I know people in Beverly Hills. I see them on television. We will stop Trump, but they go in and vote for me, you know? It's, no, it's true. It's like you think it's woke. It's not. You look at the percentage of votes and everything else, if you can count on them, which you basically can't. But look, you just keep your thoughts and keep, because you happen to be doing the right thing. There are many, many more of you than you understand. There are many more of you than there are of them. And a lot of them are you, because it's common sense. You know, they say, are you a conservative? Are you... Whether you're conservative, yeah, I'm conservative, but I'm really a person of common sense. We need a wall. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I'm a person with common sense. This is what I mean. This is what I mean. It's bigger than politics for him. Whether you're conservative, yeah, I'm conservative, but I'm really a person of common sense. We need a wall. We want low taxes. We want good education. We want to be able to build and buy houses. You know, nobody can buy houses anymore because the interest rates are so high. Remember when they were high? I was jawboning that guy. Get them down. You better get them down. They said you can't fire the head of the Federal Reserve, but he thought he was going to be fired. And, uh, you know, you take a look at interest rates, what's happening right now. You just stay just the way you are. You shouldn't change at all and just go out there. And people respect you, and they respect you mm -hmm. more than you would ever think. And there's so many of you. Okay? Yep. And you're going to a great school. Thank you all very much. So remember Beautiful. that. Get out and caucus and have a good time. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Great job. This is what I love about Donald Trump. He's a man who stays on his conviction. If he is wrong, he will die in his wrong. Um, he doesn't sway. I love that about him. He believes what he believes, and he says what he says, and he stays for what is right. But what he says here at the end, I want to focus on that. He's a man with common sense. You see, even though politics is a dirty business, right, and there's a lot going on there, I'm not saying I know everything that's going on there. But it's not that hard. It's really not that difficult. The secret is to serve the people and do what is right for the country in which you rule. It's that simple. And the simple secret serving the people, not the businessmen, the moneyed men, the bankers, okay? Not these, uh, these folks. I mean, I can understand their value as well, but the, the grassroots, the people who voted for you, the general masses. These are the ones that the politician simply has to serve. And I think Trump has actually understood this. He's learned 
Uh, he's made some mistakes, definitely, and learned a lot from them. He's, he's also learning who to trust and who not to trust. Um, all of that. He seems like he's gotten so much better. He's gotten sharper. I mean, no wonder why some of these people are afraid of what happens if Trump, Trump wins. Because if Trump wins, their system is in decay, it's in trouble. If Trump wins, they have to run for the hills. If Trump wins again, some of these folks, they have to hide because their supposed communistic, fascistic system that they set up over the years could be dethroned, destroyed by Trump's policies. This is what they are afraid of. And I'll tell you what, and I'm not saying this text here fully reflects Trump, but in some way it does. In Psalms 15, verse 1, the Bible says, O Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall I dwell in thy holy hill? I want you to notice one of the qualities that God highlights. And this is the one that stands out to me when it comes to Mr. Trump. And I will say, we can do, we can be uh, the same. It says, he that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness. Here's the next thing. Speaketh the truth in his heart. And this is what I love about this man. He speaks the truth in his heart. A lot of things he was saying. We say, oh, man, you were lunacy, you were this, you were that, you were that. But now today we're looking at it and say, yo, he was right. Trump was right. Trump was right about these supposed open, board, open door, open border policies. He was right. Trump was also right about what was going to happen to Ukraine. He was right. Trump was right about a lot of things that was going on. The corruption with the Biden's family. He was right. Trump was right when he calls the fake news. He said these people were lying. They're a bunch of fake news. He was right. <laughs> Trump, he was right about a lot of things. He was right about the, our energy and dependence. And if the Bidens were to win, they were going to tear the system apart and destroy the economy. He was right. So he warned us about a lot of the number of things during his time. And oftentimes, you know, the media made it look like he was this bad, you know, election denier and everything. They call him election denier. Turned out to be he was right. The Russia hoax. He said it was a hoax. People said, no, that's not you. You really colluded with Russia to steal the election. He was right. <laughs> it's like, gosh, do you understand why I respect Trump now? I'm just saying much more could be said. Link in the description below. Like and subscribe to the page. Click the bell icon for more. Let's bring this video to an end. It's been a good day. Share your thought and perspective with me. What do you love about this man? Why are you voting for him? I want to hear from you. Have a good one. Bye.